Let me know what you figure out and I'll stop wherever. <coughs> Well. <laughs> I don't have a picture. Does that matter? Or? You're good. We're ready to call the meeting to order. Okay. Oh, I am talking. Okay. We'll call the airport committee a m meeting for Moorhead, Minnesota to order. Um, says here we have agenda amendments is next first up on the agenda <coughs> is there any amendments None. Okay. next up is approval of minutes for the february 23rd meeting of uh, 2022 um, they are published here in the uh, pamphlet here packet and uh, is there any uh, corrections or additions? Hearing none, I'll take a, a uh, motion for approval. Approve. Hmm? And motion to approve. I'll second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Um, citizens to be heard. Mr. Chair, if we don't have any citizens to be heard, I just want to take a really quick minute. Um, I want to thank Walt Volmers for his work on the airport committee over the years. Um, his term recently expired. And so we just want to take an opportunity to thank Walt for his service on the committee and then also introduce our new at-large member, um, Marissa Bankston Lorzell. So help me in welcoming Marissa to the commission. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I've been to a couple meetings now, so. <laughs> okay. Yes, indeed, Walt's. Walt's been uh, around a long time for aviation in general. I knew him back 30, 40 years ago when he was on the EAA chapter over in Fargo. So, so, so. Anyhow, so next up, there's no citizens to be heard beyond that uh, comment. So. Uh, Next up is consider agreement for business at the Moorhead Airport vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis, uh, Cirrus Services. And I can provide a few points to this one. Um, Cirrus Services is a current licensed aircraft rental business and is looking in the future to potentially expand to offer flight school. And so uh, what you'll see in your packet today is some preliminary terms and conditions. We're still working with the owner op operator, Ryan Anderson, to make sure all the terms and conditions um, in the agreement are appropriate um, with the city attorney. Um, but it is in a substantially completed form at this point. And so um, it includes both the option to operate aircraft rental as well as flight school services in the future. So I'm looking to see if there is any questions and if not, a potential motion to recommend approval of the agreement with Cirrus Services, which would then be forwarded on to the city council. I, uh, I have one, I guess. Cirrus, uh, of course, is a well-known aircraft manufacturer in Duluth. Uh, is there any connection or not, or do they just happen to pick the same name? I don't believe so. Nothing. Okay. I don't know whether that would have any effects on anything in that regard. But. They would still go through their appropriate licensing through the state as well. So sort that part out then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Comments or 
nice to see more business in a time when it's not conducive. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, we send a lot of student pilots over the river to Fargo to take their lessons. So what a good option for people to do that right yeah. here in Moorhead. I'll make a motion for them to start business at the Moorhead Airport. On the motion. I'll Two. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Okay. Uh, review, review capital improvement plan. So you'll see this report starts on page 24 of your packet. And this is a standard report that we see every year because we have the $150,000 in the AIP federal funds that we create CIPs or capital improvement plans for. Uh, but new this year is the bipartisan infrastructure law or bill. And that is providing an additional $159,000 for approved capital projects at the airport for years 22 through 26. So the plan that you see on page 25, again, it's draft, um, looking for any comment, um, does include both the AIP and BIL funding um, as we would anticipate it is broken out. Of course, all of this is preliminary until reviewed by federal and state agencies, as well as being incorporated in the respective federal, state, and local budgets. Um, I will note that the terminal building improvements that you see under 2023 has an asterisk by it. The bill funding has a separate funding category for terminal building improvements. It is competitive nationwide. So what we're proposing is that we would apply for that money, but it's unknown whether we would receive it. So that would be separate from the 159,000 per year. That is in other areas um, in this draft plan. One other thing that I'm hoping to get comment on is um, we have been looking at different taxiway expansion areas that you'll see identified in the map um, and then hopefully color coded ac accordingly um, in the CIP. And in 2024, you'll see the, the dark blue area in the map is the taxiway for the private hangars as well as a vehicle access road um, for the hangars. Um, I will note that there has been some interest in the commercial spaces um, right on the taxiway there going um, off to the west. And so one of the discussion points that I'm hoping the committee can have today is whether or not there's any interest in maybe moving those that commercial pavement expansion um, ahead of the other pavement expansion because we still do have a couple of available um, private hangar spaces available on the existing taxiway or if you would like to keep it as is um, in the plan right now. Um, like I said, uh, we don't have um, any commercial interests that are ready at this point to come forward to the committee, um, but there has been some interest in discussion um, with some people who may be interested in the future. And with that, I will open it up to questions, comments, and discussion. Anyone? Um, so the dark blue phase on the map um, is currently planned for 2024. You'll see the pink commercial taxi lane. That we originally had pretty far into the future um, but that is the area that right now we're seeing interest in. So I'm just wondering if there's any, um, and it's, it's something that, you know, we can continue to take a look at and bring back at the August meeting too. Um, but I'm just wondering if there would be any interest of maybe switching those priorities around um, to see if we can get some of the commercial expansion or even look at, you know, maybe a, a, com a different combination. So maybe it is a, a commercial expansion with just a new taxi lane and not the vehicle access road or, or some combination thereof. Um, but just wondering if there's any interest in moving up the pavement on that pink commercial taxi lane. 
having um, room for two to three private hangars with the additional or with the uh, existing taxiway or entrance area, I guess I would look forward to work in that pink area or the blue area. Um, you might get more commercial sooner, and we've already got three spaces for private hangars now that could be used. Yeah, I guess I would agree also. Uh, uh, private hangers are are, uh, <coughs> are good. Oh, you get people out there, but also uh, having commercial stuff out there is fiscally responsible too, I think. so. It'll bring more money in yep. based on the lease for the land for private versus commercial. So there is no um, commercial spots available right now, right? There's Correct. Unless you build out the pink, there's someone comes in, they'd be like. Correct. Whereas, whereas we do have some hangar space for, for private, right? Correct. Yeah, so I, I agree. I think that the pink would be something you could move up. Because um, then you have a mixture. You have a, a, the more flexibility. Well, to me, it seems like it's a uh, build it and they will come situation. Yeah. As far as the commercial taxi land. Well, if there is consensus on that, what I will do is, um, if the committee is okay with this uh, way forward, I will not request a motion on this CIP today. Um, I will adjust it and bring it back to the next meeting to see if it would be something um, that the committee would like to move on for approval. <coughs> Comments on that theory? So Christy, are you thinking of just switching those or kind of um, making the pink take the 2024 kind of slot? Potentially. Yes, and then possibly even, um, I'd like to talk to Jeff who wasn't able to attend today, but I'd like to talk to him to see what just the dark blue taxiway without the entrance road expansion, how much that would be to see if it would be possible to do those two together or if that would put us over our available budget. So I'll look at both of those options. Well, I see the taxiway or the road entrance there is it's green access road maintenance is there some expansion in that green also or the hope would be to do some expansion to the parking lot as well as raise the road a bit um, but you can see there um, many of them towards the end that you see do have a funding shortfall so um and we look at these every year so it's just you know we can adjust and and adjust priorities and see what's available in the budget as well but okay sounds good draw a new picture is there any other uh conversation on the capital improvement plan okay we'll move into discussing the fly in I wanted to put this on the agenda um, those of you that have been involved in future and past fly-ins I've reached out to and talked to a bit um, we we lost a great advocate um, with Bruce and Phyllis who took on so much of the planning for the fly-in in previous years. And so I wanted to sort of reach out to folks and see uh, where, were we, where, we, where we were at. And a few things um, sort of bubbled to the surface. Um, the one was um, in talking with the airport manager and, and FBO, there's a significant amount of work scheduled at the airport, which is great. Um, but it also means that the hangars are really full. And so the normal space that would be available 
um, for the interior pancake feed, for example, um, may not be available in 2022. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like it's very, very busy right now. That's a true statement. Uh, us and the maintenance shop, we both have all the work we can handle right now. And the idea of um, taking my people to clear out the hangar, and you know that takes by the time it's all done over two days. Um, I got a hangar full of airplanes getting worked on. I don't have a place to put them because the storage hangar's full. So, yeah, we're, we don't have the space to do it. So, based on that, I would, I uh, would, uh, I mean, that can be worked around in the form of, because there's obviously big tents you can have and things like that, but that's something that will probably take a year to switch over. So one one idea that um, I didn't want to just lead with bad news. <laughs> uh, one idea that uh, maybe the committee would want to consider is just given uh, the lack of available interior space um, and not having an identified champion at this point who could take on the level of work that Bruce and Phyllis did, which we thank them for. Um, the airport groundbreaking happened in 1995. So the 30th year anniversary will be coming up in 2025, which coincides with the city of Moorhead's 150th birthday, which is the same year. Um, so one of the ideas was, you know, maybe we don't have the, the space and the uh, available personnel to do a 2022 fly-in, but maybe we plan 2025 as sort of our next great fly-in where we could celebrate a whole lot of things about the airport. So um, interested in any discussion on that or any feedback, um, but that was just one idea of a really momentous thing that's coming up. Not a terrible idea, I think, uh, although as it sounds like we're more ahead and everybody else is kind of switching gears to bigger and better things that Maybe we have like a, a trial run fly in in 24 or something like that, just to get the kinks out before we have the big one. I think what you're saying on the big plan is awesome. So, so but I'm not sure I want to go from zero to 50 or whatever they call it. <coughs> so. I think taking at least a year off makes sense. We just yeah. aren't prepared this year. Yeah, I and know, we uh, could look at it for 23 or 24 if we got time to think about it. 25 would be perfect for the big one. In the past, how many planes have like, shown up for the event? And do they stay multiple nights or just fly in and fly back out? Most of them in and out. Okay. It's like most fly-ins, mm -hmm. yeah. They um, 8 to noon, 8 to 1 o'clock thing, and they're gone by 3, you know. So and are we talking like dozens of planes or like what in the past, what's it been like? Well, there, some years we get a lot of planes, some, you know, depending on the weather again, you know, they get up in the morning and if the winds are real ugly or if it's raining and whatnot, that tells you right away you're going to have very few. But, you know, it's not a, it's not a big money maker. It's just something for pilots to, to do on a Saturday or Sunday morning. And we all get excited about doing it, but uh, if it isn't, uh, Good weather, you know, we we don't go and there's there's not a lot of profit involved and the, the work to put it together is big, really, on a big scale for certain people. You know, you take two or three, four people, they're real busy. And we end up having to haul stuff. You know, we've picked up tables and chairs all the way from Castleton and, and bring to Moorhead, put them up, have your feed, take them down, haul them back to, you know, and there's, there's less people to haul stuff back than there is to pick it up, always, so. so and I'll just add to that too, Bill, that um, in addition to the pilots that fly in and out, it's a great opportunity, I and mean, we get a lot of community members too, who just come out for the pancakes and, and a lot of fun. So I think oh, there's, it's pretty steadily been a couple hundred. I would say there's probably uh, 10 or 15 to one, the public showing up over pilots. So, and they look forward to that too. You know. So then when you guys talk about needing hangar space, it's for like setting up chairs and having the breakfast. Yes, and correct. Got yeah. it. And okay. And it takes a big area because if you get 100 people eating at one time, and that does happen, and it's steady from 8 to noon, you know, that kind of thing. So 
if we don't have the space, it's a problem. And you know, a tent is a good idea, but the tent, of course, would have to be put up over a grass area and uneven ground and grass area. Uh, chairs, what type of chairs do you have? Do they have legs on them that are going to sink, or you know? So. Well, then we'll have the pink area done too. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> Do we have a um, kind of master planning list for what needs to be done? It sounds like, you know, we've had two people that have been taking most of the task on um, and they're sorely missed now. Um, Give us a year to find some more. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but, but even then, um, do they ha would they have like a, here's what's needed, um, yeah. Because otherwise, you're, you're, I mean, this is, this is one good reason to have that at least one time before the 2025, um, because you're going you're gonna to forget something that you're going to kind of go, it's how been, do we forget It's that? been done often enough by a variety of people out there, you know, that we know what we need to have to get it done, yeah, without putting a printed list down, I think. But it also helps if you're trying to get someone to, to or someones to, to do this, if you have the, hey, Here's sort of a list of what needs to be done. They can look at it and go, oh yeah, that's doable. I could work at putting something together too, and I'll pick Bill's brain and, and Mike and others. I think the biggest thing is lining up somebody to actually come and cook the pancakes. <clears throat> the rest of the stuff, everybody out at the airport knows what to do is we've done it for enough years now. Probably one thing I could do. <laughs> yeah, if it aligns to the time, I can, I can flip pancakes. But having a big enough griddle to do it, though. That's, I, I was kind of thinking, you know, there's some kind of jet engine type, you know, grill you could make. I don't know. That'd be fun. Ryan? <laughs> oh, is it, what is it, Fergus that has the, they had the uh, waffle one, right? Is that correct? Is that Fergus or was that Alex? That sounds like Fergus. Where they had, but they had the grill, the grills all set up and they got how many grills? You know, they just pop it on and, you know, the grills are as long as this table individual grills you throw them on and flip the lid over and go to the other end and take them out take them out fill them up flip them over and somebody's has to uh, furnish those you know who's got the investment and can we get them to do it and how much might they want if they don't do it for free otherwise it's the big grill and Marvin can flip pancakes he's good at that I think, uh, too, another thing I want to add is uh, the career academy that high school started. It's my understanding that they have an aviation program. And I would like to get that out there to people to uh, get help. That would be a source of many people to help. True. They also have a culinary arts program. What? Yeah, that's right too. Yeah. I got to sample that someday, one day when I got picked up. Picked the yeah, I didn't up. see a gigantic griddle, but you know. What are these kids walking out here with this? Looks like chili or whatever. And I'm going, and some got three cups there. It was good. It smelled good even. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's a, that's a good point, yeah. On the off-season here, we'll try and work on some more of that. And if anyone is interested in being part of the fly-in team, please feel free to reach out to me and we'll, we'll start getting that list together of past things and see what we can maybe put together in future years. Good, appreciate it. Got a couple things I'd like to bring up if we're at a point. Or what do you got next there? We had aviation reports is after that, so. Um, the runway and taxiway, uh, cracks in the, in the runway and the taxiway. I, I went down the runway the other day real slow on the uh, four-wheeler and there's 64 cracks across the runway from side to side. Some of them are quite substantial and I counted 31 on the taxiway coming back. I think that needs to be addressed because it's yep, only I'm, gonna get worse. 
I'm aware, and Jeff's gonna look at it to see if we can schedule some crack sealing or what would need to be due. So, yep. Next. Uh, shifting? No, no, just basically this time cracks, but they'll continue to chip care off. There will be shifting. Well, they'll be <laughs> chip off too, you yeah. know, and be get wider, so. Yeah. And then you get the thing all the way down the runway. Uh, another thing is, um, I'd like to ask questions of Christy or the rest of the board or whoever about the weeds around the buildings. Uh, I think we know that we're responsible or we have access to 10 feet around our private hangars, of which I have one, and we maintain that. But I also have grass behind my building, which is outside of that 10 feet. But uh, another person and I, or actually two or three of us, we maintain that as much as we can, but the uh, the weeds outside of that 10 feet are even right up to the buildings on several of them. There's a lot of weed growth and they aren't cared for during the year. So I guess whose responsibility is it? Is it Mike to do it? Is it the individual oh, uh, hangar owner to do it? Uh, just a question, I guess. We got some pictures uh, that are available if you want to look at and there's getting to be a lot of weeds on two or three of the properties and then the parking we know that we have to park within that 10 foot boundary area of our building which most of us are adhering to and I think we're doing a pretty good job but there are two or three private hangers that have a very long apron area from their building out to the taxiway and I guess some of them think that they can park anywhere on that area because they paid to put the concrete in and it's 40 feet long so they can park wherever. So um, I think we need to address that, how they park in front of their buildings. What their, uh, when we decide about that or something's done about that or if there is already a decision, is there, well, the if markings we could put to. I think the decision has been made that That's you know even though you have a 40 foot apron, you still only have 10 feet to park on technically, but some of them didn't read it or didn't adhere to it or don't care. Is what I'm getting at. I think it should be the same for everybody. Right. Right. So it's more uh, it affects some of us that are on the front ramp area more so than the others because of the traffic of the planes is coming and going where the taxiway on the backside is not that active. But um, there still could be a situation where a plane wanted to taxi on that back taxi area and if the cars are parked too far out onto that 40 foot apron, it could be a problem with the wings. I'm happy to address both of those. Okay. I'll be out at the airport on Friday, so I'll take a look at some of the weed issues and talk with Mike and Cindy about how we can best address that. Um, and then if you just want to let me know who the parking issues are, I can take a look at that too. Yeah, because, you know, when, when you move snow in the wintertime, which Mike does, and it's easy to catch some of that rock and you push it out into the grass area. And in the spring, it needs to be cleaned up and put back where it belongs, but that doesn't happen in a few cases. And and it becomes an appearance issue. And then again, if it's outside of that 10 feet and Mike were to mow it, and if he starts catching rocks with a mower and pitching them, the last thing you want is that hangar owner to complain because his building got hit by rocks. And it could be part of his problem because he didn't take care of his 10 feet. So is that 10 feet a right away or is it a part of the probably part of the lease. It's within the lease agreement. Okay. It's kind of like berms in front of your house. You're, you're responsible for taking care of the sidewalk and the berm and stuff. It's not really yours though. Um, no. So um, are they noxious weeds or is it just tall grass? Oh, it, it's or a mixture. dandelions, it's some, um, you know, grass area, it's some broad leaves, a little bit of everything. Native Even thistle, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> Uh, even trees, you know, you get trees throwing their seeds around and oh, yeah. all of a sudden you get uh, a bunch of them growing alongside your building and they grow up two, three, four feet and the longer you leave them, the worse it's going to get, you know. And it's just a matter of going in there with weed control and spraying it. 
couple of us do a fair amount of that, and it does keep it keep it down. And it's it, the looks on it is a whole lot better. We hate the people to come to our airport and see that. Fundamentally, it's just mowing it, getting getting someone after it. Well, yeah, the mowing, you know, Mike does a good job of that, but he can't. It's just, I don't think it's his responsibility, or he can't do in between the. It's all rock in between the buildings, right. so it's what's growing in the rocks is what the problem is. You also can't get really close to buildings when you're mowing. True. Yep. True. I mean, continued mowing, if you keep it short, will eventually get to the weeds. But some of those weeds that he's mentioned have a seed life of multiple years. <laughs> well, I cut down a lot of trees on the one piece of property next to the last private hangar on that north bay there. And, and some of those trees were already four to five inch diameter on the trunks. And it's all cut down, and the city did come out and pick it all up and run it through their chipper. There's a few stumps left because I didn't have the equipment to, you know, get the, the last two feet or a foot and a half. And eventually a building will go in there, so they'll that'll be cleaned up. But there's a few of them that are starting to grow again, so we either need to cut a few more down or when they're young we can spray them and get rid of them. And then we also need to keep an eye on that ditch on the west end where the water runs out into ditch 41 there. We had a real problem with trees in there and the city did come out and spray and, and chopped that down last year. And when I went by the other day, it, it looks pretty good. Uh, do you agree, Mike, with that? If we keep spraying it and keep it dead where the culverts go out, we'll, we'll be in good shape. But that was real bad. Matter of fact, the, I think it was even the FAA, didn't they tell us two years ago we had to cut those trees? I think that's one thing they brought up because it's right at the end of the runway. That looks pretty decent now. That's all I got. Else with any last minute comments? Suggestions, wishes? Besides the winning lottery ticket? We have one more agenda item then, I guess, is the uh, aviation reports, or head aviation reports. Yeah, well, the long spring, we didn't really saw that much fuel, but now that uh, May got nice and we have two jets based on the airfield now, last month, May, we sold a lot of fuel. So. <laughs> Seeing a, lot of, uh, seeing a pickup in activity, it's kind of nice. And cheaper than Fargo. Yeah, there was actually a jet came over from Fargo, bought 800 gallons of jet fuel from us, and by the time it was all said and done with, he saved $1,600 by flying it over here. That's including the cost of operating the airplane. And it cost him $200 to fly over and back. Yeah, I was thinking it was probably more than that even depending what plane it was. Else on the report side? Got nothing. Okay. Uh, the only other thing that I'll note is um, we'll be working with um, Alice and Monkey to come up with a, um, <coughs> excuse me, come up with a um, mural of some sort or display of some sort for inside the pilot lounge that will outline the life of Florence Kling and Smith. And so uh, we'll also look at um, some different sign options for the airport as well. So, but we're starting with that internal display that we're gonna be working on with her. Thank you. I've, re I've received like some emails. There's, there's excitement out there um, from especially like Minnesota female aviators about this name change and w when are you gonna have a dedication? When, are, when is this gonna happen? We wanna fly in, we wanna be a part of this. So um, just thought I'd let you know, there's excitement. There's people that are excited for this and want to be a part of it. 
oh, we, I mean, we should plan something for whenever the time's appropriate. Well, if there's nothing else, I'll uh, entertain a motion for adjournment. Make that motion. Second. I will second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>